The yield max option income ETFs have been all the hype as of recently, and for good reason, considering some of the ETFs are yielding between 30 and even upwards of 70%. For just a quick example, the APLY or the Apple Option Income Strategy ETF is yielding around 30%, TSLY, the Tesla Option Income Strategy ETF, is distributing around 50%, and Kony, the Coinbase Coin Option Income Strategy ETF, is distributing around 75%. Yes, you heard me right, 75%. Now in this video, we are going to be creating a tier list and I'm going to be rating every single yield max option income strategy ETF from A being the highest quality and the most likely for me to actually invest into, or maybe I already even own some, all the way down to F, which means that that particular yield max ETF would never find a spot in my portfolio. Now, if this happens to be something that interests you, make sure to stick around until the end because you are going to learn a lot, I promise that. And before we get into this, make sure to please drop a like down below and subscribe for more future content like this. Now, first off, before I go through and rank every single one of these yield max ETFs from start to finish, for those that might not know exactly how these yield max ETFs work, let's give a quick little background. So right here on the yield max website, it says yield max ETFs seek to generate monthly income by selling or writing call options on a single company stock or single ETF exposures. Now, YieldMax ETF pursues a strategy that aims to harvest compelling yields from assets that are not typically associated with monthly income. So just for example, look at the TSLY ETF. This is the Tesla Option Income Strategy ETF. So this YieldMax ETF basically tracks or follows Tesla. And even though it says that this fund does not directly invest into Tesla stock, it does invest in Tesla through the use of derivatives or through options. And by using a synthetic cover call strategy, it basically has the same exact exposure that you or I would have by selling a traditional cover call on Tesla. But instead, the YieldMax ETF funds use a synthetic cover call strategy, which basically does the same thing. Now, to give a little bit of an idea of what some of these funds have actually distributed, it's honestly kind of shocking. Look at TSLY, for example. Since the beginning of this year, we have almost a $1 distribution on a monthly basis. The next month was $0.90, cents, $0.90 cents again after that, then $0.82, cents, $0.44 cents after that, then $0.80, cents, $1.06, $0.83, $0.58, cents, and then as of recently, $0.57. Cents. So it does seem like over the last few months, the actual distributions have sort of been trending down lower and lower. And the amount of distributions paid per month from each different YieldMax ETF is going to depend on multiple things, like how the underline, in this case Tesla, traded within that monthly time frame. And of course, things like how much volatility is in the market at that time, because the more volatility, the more the options are going to cost. And since YieldMax sells options, the more income they could potentially make within that time frame. But overall, if you were to look at all these different distributions from the last year or so, they all look pretty good. And there's very few other investment vehicles that are offering this type of distribution across the entire stock market. And maybe I'm wrong, but honestly, if you know about some, please comment them down below. So now that we all are sort of up to speed on how the yield max ETFs work for the most part, and definitely subscribe to my video because I go over these yield max ETFs individually quite a bit throughout the videos on my channel. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe. But now going to the tier list, we are going to be ranking every single one of these YieldMax ETFs from start to finish. But let me give you a little bit of background on how I'm going to do so. So when it comes to choosing which YieldMax option income strategy ETF you personally want to buy, of course, there's going to be many different things you need to think about. But one of the main things that I definitely recommend you think about is if or if not, you'd actually want to hold onto the underlying security, the underlying stock, or ETF that the actual YieldMax ETF is tracking. For example, if you don't wanna have any exposure, so let's say downside or even upside to Tesla, well then maybe don't buy into the TSLY YieldMax Option Income Strategy ETF that, that uses the reference asset of Tesla. On the other hand, let's say that you are a huge fan of Apple stock and you're bullish on Apple stock from here. Now, do you think that it's going to trade up from here? Well, then maybe you'd wanna have some exposure to APLY because you happen to think that Apple or the reference asset is going to trade well. So, so of course, even though APLY is not necessarily going to trade exactly how the reference asset is going to trade, it's going to obviously correlate somewhat. So that being said, a lot of the way that I'm going to rank out all these different ETFs across the entire YieldMax list, it's going to have a lot to do, of course, with the underlying reference asset, if you will, because if I don't wanna hold on to it, then I'm probably not gonna rank it really high. But of course, on the other side, if I am a huge fan of the reference asset, let's say Tesla, Apple, Nvidia, etc., then that's going to probably be higher up on my tier list. Now, the other thing that's definitely going to be a factor in my personal ranking is, is going to be things like the distribution rate, how it's performed so far, and of course, how I think the distributions are going to look like in here in the future. 
Now, the distributions, like I said, are going to be based on multiple different things, of course, on a monthly basis. But that being said, the underlying reference assets that do typically have more volatility and offer more premiums as far as options go are most likely going to be distributed a lot. At least I hope so. So now that we got all of that out of the way, let's go through and rank these one by one from start to finish. So the first yield max ETF that I'm definitely going to put in the A category is going to be ticker symbol TSLY or the yield max Tesla option income strategy ETF, which is actually one of my personal holdings. I currently hold altogether around 150 to maybe 200 shares of TSLY across my portfolios as of right now. And I've been holding on to TSLY for several months now. Now, the main reason I would put Tesla or TSLY in the A category is because TSLY has had a pretty impressive track record. The year to date total return for TSLY is up above 50%, which is incredible. Also, it goes without saying that I'm a huge fan of Tesla stock, the underlying company that, that TSLY sort of references. And also, the overall popularity of TSLY has really drawn me to want to be a part of the movement. Now, that being said, TSLY, along with the rest of all these different ETFs, are always going to remain a small portion of my overall portfolio. So with that being said, it's always going to be sort of a smaller satellite position. Now the next TSLY ETF that I'm going to place in the B category is going to be ticker symbol APLY or the Yield Max Apple Option Income Strategy ETF. Now Apple or APLY is actually in my personal portfolio as well. I think I own between 10 and 20 shares. And although Apple has not yielded as much as TSLY or some of the other Yield Max Option Income Strategy ETFs, it has been pretty consistent and it has generated a nice amount of income for my portfolio since I've held on to the shares of APLY. Now, the underlying stock that APLY references is, of course, Apple, and I'm a huge fan of Apple. I currently own 1,000 shares of Apple in my long-term portfolio, and I've owned my shares of Apple for several years now. And actually, funny enough, my Apple shares, my 1,000 shares, is my largest position of a single stock or single ETF that I own right now, and it's made me the most money in potential gains. So although I'm a fan of Apple, I wouldn't say it's necessarily my favorite yield max ETF just because the distribution is a little bit more boring. And when I'm personally looking for a yield max ETF, I want to play a little bit more on the risky side because again, they're always going to be sort of a smaller, more side position in my overall portfolio. Now, the next yield max ETF that I'm going to rank is going to be OARK. It's sort of cut off right here, but OARK, of course, tracks or references the ARK K fund. Now, I am by no means a fan of any of the ARK ETFs, and I've actually in the past lost some money back, I think, in 2021 when I bought a little bit of ARK K and one of the other ARK funds. I can't really think of the name right now. Now, even though OARK, as far as the yield max ETF, could be a good option and could generate a significant amount of distributions for investors, because I'm not a fan whatsoever of the underlying ETF that it references to, the ARK ETFs, I am by no means going to be a fan of OARK, and that's why it's going to land in the F category for me. The next ETF that I'm going to place in the B category that I personally have not invested into yet, but I'm definitely planning on it at some point, is NVDY, the NVIDIA option income strategy ETF. NVIDIA is a really high quality company and a stock that I've owned several years ago and unfortunately sold before it really, really ripped up in price. Now, the reason I would put this in B is because it's really high up on my list, but I don't personally actually even own it yet. The NVDY ETF has had a really impressive distribution so far, and it's definitely on my watch list as far as all the yield max ETFs go. Now, the next ETF from yield max that I would put also in the B category is AMZY or the yield max Amazon option income strategy ETF. Now, I put AMZY in the B category very similar to the same reasons. I put NVDY in the B category. I'm a huge fan of the underlying company. I'm very bullish on both the stocks. I don't personally own any of either. Maybe I actually do own a few shares of AMZY. I honestly can't remember, but I don't own a large position of either whatsoever, but they are both on my watch list and I would not be surprised if I added a few of them in my portfolio sometime soon here. Now, the next yield max ETF that I'm going to place in either the C or D category is going to be FBY or the yield max meta or Facebook option income strategy ETF. Now, I'm going to put FBY in the C category because I don't personally own it. I'm not the biggest fan of Facebook as a company or a stock, although I do think that it probably does have some growth potential from here. And just with the amount of premiums that are offered for Facebook, I don't really think it's necessarily going to be a position that I'm ever going to hold on to as far as the yield max FBY ETF. So for those reasons all alone, I'm going to sort of put in the middle category at C. And although maybe it's going to be one that I watch in the future, it probably won't be an ETF that I add to my portfolio anytime soon here. Now, next up, I'm going to add GOOY or the Google Option Income Strategy ETF into the C category. Now, I'm definitely much more bullish on Google as an underline than Facebook personally. But as far as the option premiums that are offered for Google 
And as far as the upside potential from here for the underlying stock that it references to, I'm not necessarily sure about it, so I'm going to put it in the C category, sort of once again in the middle range. Now the next yield max ETF, this one is going to be very tough to place because Kony or C-O-N-Y is the coin or Coinbase Option Income Strategy ETF. Now this is one of the ETFs that I don't personally hold in my portfolio as of yet, but I'm very tempted to and I'm probably going to very soon. I'm going to put it in the B category. Now what's funny about Kony is I'm not necessarily even all that big of a fan of coin stock or Coinbase as a platform or, or anything of the sorts, but because Kony does offer some massive premiums, and the Kony distribution so far has been absolutely incredible at 75%. It's most likely definitely going to end up in my portfolio at some point here. Once again, for the reason that I'm sort of personally utilizing the yield max ETFs as more of a speculative, risky, small portion of my portfolio. I'm not looking at these ETFs as a large position that I'm planning on living off of or, or really using any sort of serious money invested into. I'm sort of using them as fun gamble positions that I can look forward to earning a, ma a massive amount of income on a monthly basis from the distributions and nothing really more than that, at least not at this point. So for those reasons, even though I'm not the biggest fan of the underlying coin stock, I'm going to put Kony in the B category because I do personally think that it's going to end up in my portfolio very soon here. I'm probably going to just add a few shares at a time and scale in, but Kony is going to be very fun to watch and has a lot of income or dividend focused investors pretty hyped. Now the next yield max ETF is going to be NFLY or the Netflix option income strategy ETF. And although Netflix as an underlying stock does offer some pretty impressive premiums, which means the distributions could be big in the future, I'm not a fan whatsoever of Netflix as a company or a stock, and most likely would never trade it whatsoever throughout my portfolio. So for those reasons, it's more or less going to end up in the F position as it's most likely never going to come across my portfolio. Now, and along with Netflix, pretty much the same exact reasons, DISO or the Disney Option Income Strategy ETF is going to land in the F position as well for me. Now, Disney as a stock and as a company, I have no idea what's been going wrong, but I do know one thing and that's that Disney has not been performing well whatsoever over the past let's say a few years and on top of that there's definitely other ETFs in this category that are going to offer bigger distributions most likely because of the massive premiums that the options are going to offer from the underlying stocks of these ETFs reference for so for those reasons alone I'm going to add Disney in the F category as it's most likely never going to come across my portfolio and I'm honestly not a fan of it compared to so many of these other options now the next yield max ETF that I'm going to put in the D category is going to be XOMO or the Exxon Mobil option income strategy ETF now, ExxonMobil is a stock that I've previously held in the past, I think maybe three or four years ago. I since sold out of it and, and I've watched it from time to time, but it's not currently a position in my portfolio. As far as the yield max ExxonMobil option income strategy ETF, once again, going off of my personal strategy when it comes to the yield max option income ETFs, I'm looking for the higher risk, higher reward out of the bunch. So ExxonMobil doesn't really cross that off if you ask me. So for those reasons, I'm going to put ExxonMobil in the D category because I am a fan of the underlying somewhat, but most likely would never buy the yield max version of, of XOMO. So for those reasons, XOMO is going to land in the D category. The next yield max ETF, MSFO or the Microsoft. Now this one's tough. I'd probably put this in between the B or the C category, honestly, for me. I'll put in the B because I might actually add some of this one to my portfolio at some time here. Maybe a very, very small amount. Probably a, probably a similar amount to anything like the AMZY or even the APLY that I currently have in my portfolio. Now Microsoft, of course, is the underlying stock. How can you not be a fan of it? But as far as utilizing Microsoft for option premium, it's definitely not going to have the most premium compared to some of these other names. But Microsoft does have some pretty healthy premium, which means there could be a good amount of cash to be earned from premium on a monthly basis. So even though I don't personally hold any MSFO as of right now, I definitely could consider adding it into my portfolio, maybe sometime in the future. Now the next one that I'm going to put in the C category is going to be the JPMO, the JP Morgan Option Income Strategy ETF. Now I'm a huge fan of JP Morgan as a stock. I currently own 100 shares of JP Morgan that I've held since probably 2018 or 2019. And JP Morgan as an underlying reference has always been pretty good to me. Now, as far as owning a yield max version of JP Morgan, I'm not necessarily against it, which is why I'm gonna put in the C category, but, I'm, but it's not necessarily going to be at the top because again, the option premiums that JP Morgan offer compared to something like Tesla are not even going to be comparable. Now for the investors out there that are looking for something maybe with a little bit lower beta, but still offer some nice distributions on a monthly basis, that's where I think the JPMO yield max option income strategy ETF or even the XOMO, or maybe even FBY or GOOY could be a good option to look into because some of these options that have a reference to a stock that's a little bit lower beta compared to some of the others are probably going to be a little bit more tame. 
But for those reasons, and for the reason that I'm probably not going to buy the yield max version of JP Morgan, JPMO is going to land in the C category for me. Now the last two Yieldmax ETFs are going to land in the C category as well. We're talking about AMDY, the AMD Option Income Strategy ETF, and PYPL. Now these are both going to end up in the C category for similar reasons, JP Morgan. Although as far as option premiums go, AMDY and PYPL offer a nice amount of premium, especially when there's volatility in the market. But for the more personal reasons of the fact that I'm not really that big of a fan of the underlying stocks that the Yieldmax ETF references to, for that reason alone, I'm probably not going to ever add these into my portfolio. So for those reasons, I'm going to put them in the C category. So there we have it. There is my entire Yieldmax ETF tier list broken down from A to F and of course, reasons why I added every single ETF into each category. Now to recap, my favorite all-time Yieldmax ETF is going to be the Tesla, the TSLY Option Income Strategy, which like I said, I own well over 100 shares of right now and will most likely keep adding some shares here and there moving forward. Then the B category are all the ETFs that I either currently own or plan on buying sometime very soon here. We're talking APLY, NVDY, AMZY, Kony, which I'm very much so a fan of, that definitely could go in the A category, MSFO, and then we have the Yieldmax ETFs that I'm not necessarily a fan of, but sort of neutral on, FBY, GOOY, JPMO, AMDY, and PYPY. Then in the D and F category, we have some of the Yieldmax ETFs I would never buy for sure. We have XOMO, we have OARK, NFLY, and DISO. Now, one thing that would be really interesting to see in the future and that I did hear from through the grapevine is that there could be a Yieldmax ETF that comes out soon that basically is an ETF that tracks all these different ETFs in one ETF. So you really have a little bit of exposure to all the different Yieldmax ETFs, which could honestly be pretty interesting. Now, of course, if you wanted to do that on your own, you could pretty much just buy an equally weighted amount of each one of these different Yieldmax ETFs and, so, and sort of get some exposure from every single one of them across your portfolio. But when it comes to the Yieldmax ETFs, I want to hear from you guys down below. First off, what do you think about my tier list? Is there anything that I'm absolutely off on? Or overall, do you sort of see where I'm coming from? Also in the comments, let me know your number one favorite Yieldmax ETF of all time. And also comment down below your least favorite. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like on it and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by. And if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.